A few years back, a world-renowned pizza consultant, yeah, there's such a thing, I looked it up, proclaimed that Portland might have the best pizza scene in the country. Then, just a couple months ago, a travel blog crowned our own Ken's Artisan Pizza as the second best pizza shop in the world. Some Portlanders, me, are confused by all this hype. So confused that I tracked down a local pizza expert, Blaine Bartholomew, for some answers. And if you're into pies, you might already know about him through his Instagram. He's been documenting the Portland pizza scene since 2014. Or maybe you've just been to one of his many pizza pop-ups. So today on the show, we're asking him, is Portland pizza really that good? It's Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. Get ready for our city's daily conversation. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is CityCast Portland. Thanks for being on the show today. I really wanted to talk about all of the hype that Portland has been getting with their pizza, specifically three weeks ago when we were <laughs> when we were deemed, well, one of our pizzerias was deemed the second best in the world. And so I wanted to talk to you, Blaine. Do you think Ken's Pizzeria is the second best pizza in the world? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, possibly. I think my take on Portland is it's pound for pound uh, as good as pizzas you're going to get anywhere in the world, quite frankly. And you've seen some of the publications over the years that would back that up. I think for me, Ken's is great, phenomenal, you know, and one of the kind of old guard Mm -hmm. Portland pizzerias. When I look at Portland pizza as a whole, you know, I think there's just a lot of things that make Portland really, really unique and really special when it comes to pizza. And we have such a food culture here of, you know, artisan approach, local ingredients. And traditionally, you don't you don't really think about that with pizza. Our pizzeria owners, some of them are just so creative, so outside the box. Um, they put so much care into what they're making. I do think we have, you know, the best pizza scene in the nation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're saying it. I'm saying but, it. But, you, but, but you're like, but I haven't been to the nation. Is that what you were going to say I, next? Yeah, I haven't been to every every pizza city <laughs> in the nation. So qualifier there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's not just a qualifier. That's a de-qualifier. Yeah. I just want you to know. Fair Blaine. enough. Fair enough. I think it was like 2017, Portland Monthly was like making the case that we were the new American pizza city. And then in 2021, I feel like the national media kind of picked up on it. They're just like, you know what? You guys are. But the thing is that I feel like in Portland, we have a special humility about us being the best at anything. So most of the like trash talk was from us. Like I remember like all the the threads like we're not what? Come on. You know, were you part of that conversation at all? Do you remember that when we were? Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, there were definitely some articles that came out like this couldn't possibly be true. I mean, there's New York, Chicago, New Haven, you know, you can yeah. even throw Detroit in the mix. And I never bought into that. I, I know a lot of these pizzeria owners. I know the craft. I know how great the pizza is here. So to me, it's totally believable. And just to put some weight behind it, you know, this really kind of all started with Anthony Falco, who's a uh, international pizza consultant and so he was out here for for feast portland and uh you know he said this is the greatest pizza city in the nation he's from uh, brooklyn he worked at roberta's um etc etc but he's traveled the world and he says portland is you know the best pizza city in the nation and i think for similar reasons that we don't have the history we're not constrained to a style like it's true like if you were to go somewhere and you'd be like okay what's portland pizza like they couldn't tell you Well, for one, a lot of people would be like, which Portland and what pizza? But I don't think we have a style and maybe that's what our style is. I totally agree. If I were to pick like my top 10 favorite places in Portland, no two are the same. Even some of the places like Scotty's that I love, you know, he grew up on the East Coast and he he just wanted to do East Coast pizza, but he's doing it so differently. Sourdough pizza. You know, just very different than the couple times I've been to New York and had New York. You said pizza. your top ten, and now I'm curious. Now I have to know oh, like, what is your top ten, Blaine? Yeah, I, I was. Tr- I, I don't know why I said that. Did you write it down? I I I have like a fluid top ten. It's always kind of moving based on cravings, but you know, I'd say if I'm craving a, a vegetarian pizza, there's sort of a top four for that craving, and it's Lovely's Fifty Fifty, Gracie's, Dove VV, and uh, Please Louise. I just think the the vegetable and cheese combinations at all those places are always great. And I just think the flavors pop, all, super local, uh, farm-to-table type ingredients. Lovely's 
you know, what Sarah Minnick does with, you know, creating menus based on what's in season that week at the farmer's mm-hmm. market. I mean, it's just insane the care that goes into that. Dove Vivi, just to call them out, their crust is super unique. It's a cornmeal crust. Uh, it's like nothing most people have ever tried. To round out other parts of the top 10, if I'm if I'm wanting a great, you know, sourdough pizza, Scotty's. Scotty's is it. And they've got that Dofino, that grandma uh, pizza that I absolutely love. If I want more of a East Coast style pizza shoals, and I just think you just can't go wrong there. If I'm feeling a bit gluttonous in terms of like I want heavy toppings and I want a lot of cheese and all that, pan pizzas, uh, I'd go with ranch. Uh, I'd go with pizza jerk and their cast iron. So if I'm feeling vegan for whatever reason and I'm not vegan, I would go to Boxcar. Boxcar does Detroit style pizza. It's vegan and it's a uh, Odie. There is a bit of a magician that he makes non cheeses taste like cheese. But then you have a lot of newcomers, right? There's there's a huge surplus of new pizzerias like Cafe Ali. Yeah, I was about to ask you. They got until almost like everyone's top 10 yeah. list or top five list for being the best new restaurant. But what do you think that they're doing that other people aren't doing? Um, They have, uh, you know, I, sourdough pizza. It's wood fired. So that, that in itself is not unique in Portland by any means. But I detected like pretty heavy wheat flour which I loved. So you get like these flavor dimensions to their their crust that I thought were phenomenal. I really like their sauce. I've only been there once. You know, we had a couple pies as my wife and I and my son and uh, their marinara with burrata on it was just, it was one that like I still remember, you know, the flavors as, as I'm talking about it. Uh, whenever I would go to a new pizza place, I would always just get the margarita because I'm like, okay, if you can do this for me, then I will try other things. Because it's yeah. so simple. That's why, like, if you can't, nail this, then I know that I'm not going to like your pizza. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's a great baseline pie to compare against too. So you gave some, you know, some pretty big hitters. And I, I'm going to ask you, like, I really want to know what I should be ordering at a pizza shoals because I feel like last time I was there, it was a little limp and that's why I didn't like it. Was It wasn't as, because I like a crunchy yeah, crust. Yeah, was it takeout or... No, and it was there, but okay. maybe my friends just ordered too many wet things. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you must. Have, yeah, that's surprising because it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely like it can hold the toppings. I love the Poly G over there, mm-hmm. and that's an ode to a uh, famous New York pizzeria. But um, it's got like the Mike's Hot Honey and things of that nature on it. Basil, which I always love. It's got a little spice to it. I love that. I love the Tartufo and the Tartufo too. What's... It's a white pie, truffle oil. I don't like a white pie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I know. I, I have the like pizza tastes of like a child. Yeah. I, I try different things, you know. All right, let's take a little break here. When we come back, let's talk about what could make Portland pizza even better. So what do you think Portland needs to do better though? Like, is there anything in the scene that you're just like, I wish Portland's pizza or somebody did this? I would say maybe we just got to be careful that it doesn't get watered down here because mm-hmm. obviously the the national articles around Portland being the you know the best in the nation that can change things. It, it can be a money grab for pizzerias opening up just to make money. Gotcha. Which at the end yeah. of the day, these these are businesses. They're they're there to make money, but there's so much of a soul to the Portland pizzerias that I've talked about that hopefully we don't lose. You know, it doesn't become like, oh, there's six of this franchise in town that used to be so great, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I would say that's something to be careful of as a pizza community. But Are you familiar with St. John's? Yeah, a little bit. Have you noticed that there's like a pizza place here, like every five feet? I think we have the most pizza places per capita in all of Portland. Really? And I don't understand why. And I was hoping that an expert would come and explain that to me. I have theories. I have theories. So I, I maybe should have mentioned this on the front end, but I don't own a pizzeria. I'm a consumer of pizza. So I, this would be a theory of mine in terms of why there's so much pizza in St. John's. But I would say like pizza was one of those foods that was pretty pandemic proof. Mm-hmm. A lot of p- pizzerias thrived during the pandemic because they could move with the floor and, and and really pivot to the takeout model, which is really good for for pizzerias. And then I think, again, combined with the national notoriety that we're getting, I, you know, I think that, you know, all boats kind of rise when the sea level 
moves up, and I think that's what's happening. I don't know of any necessarily that are novices that are like, I want to open a pizzeria, and I don't know anything about you know what I'm doing. But I bet you there's a fair amount of that that's happening. That's mm-hmm. it's hard. Like there's a reason I would not open a pizzeria. I've seen how hard these folks work, and like how hard it is. It's it, your heart has to be 100 in this. And I have so much respect for the right. people that have been doing it uh, for a long time. Hey, I have a question for you real quick. Are you at all familiar with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Oh, it's funny that you bring that up. My my five-year-old son, Nico, is locked in to Ninja Turtles right now. Okay. So you named a lot of pizzas in town. Yeah. And you know all everyone's personality. You got the grumpy one, the mean one. You have the introspective leader. You have the one Donatello where you're just like, I don't know what your deal is. I guess you just have a bow. And then you have the party animal, Michelangelo. So what is their favorite pizza joint in Portland? Oh, that's a perfect question. Um, I love the question so much. Uh, so like Raphael is is kind of the grumpy one. So he would... He's, he's spicy. He would have spicy. spicy right? like, oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's the, I would say he's like the toughest, you know. So he would probably... Oh, what would he want? I think pizza jerk. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. perfect pizza <laughs> jerk, a, Raphael. Kind of a dad joke in there as well with okay. that answer. So that was okay. Good. What about uh, Leonardo, the introspective leader? Oh, he's a thinker. Yeah. He'd be. He'd have his spreadsheet out and rating every little detail. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's going to Lovely's Fifty Fifty to try to figure out what the secret sauce is and what all the all the really? hype is. Yeah. I see sure. him as a Gracie's too. Like Leonardo would totally be at Gracie's. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, now this is the I think the difficult one because like who is Donatello really, you know? He might go to he'd go to a Pizza Shoals. He'd go to a Pizza Shoals. Thank you. That's what I exactly. I think, you know, it's it's the first place that someone would tell him to go. If you want, you know, the best pizza in Portland, and he would it's, go. it's the, kind of the first thing that comes off off the yeah. tongue. So, he'd probably go there. Okay. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. I think he would go to ranch because oh. it's ran, ranch is like your post party. He Michelangelo seems like life of the party. It would just and, soak it all yeah, up. Yeah, it would soak it all up. Maybe, you know, I don't know if Michelangelo drinks, but it's a great next day after a few drinks kind of pizza. Yeah, I'm thinking escape from New York pizza. Yeah. Or if he's in St. John's, he'd just go to Signal Station. That's a great... Yeah, I see the angle there. He would definitely seek out that New York pizza. You're right. To be honest, ranch was a twist. I was like, oh, just imagine Michelangelo with a like a rectangle pizza. Yeah. Doesn't it break your brain a little? It does. It does. All right. I'm not saying it wasn't a good idea because I think it's like solid. Like There's a, no a hungover answer, Michelangelo right? yeah. <laughs> at ranch is 100%. 100. Yeah. Absolutely. And now for your microdose of news. Oregon's largest employer, Intel, shocked its employees this week by announcing massive pay cuts. Mid-level employees' pay will drop by 5%, and some senior executives will get docked even more. The Oregonian reports that the move comes after a disastrous earnings call. It's estimated that the cuts could take as much as $200 million out of the pockets of Oregon workers. And Portland's largest Facebook group, Helping People Find Their Stolen Cars, has shut down permanently. Claiming it was too much of a liability, the founder of PDX Stolen Cars stated, and I quote, the city can deal with it. I let police know to quit sending folks to us, end quote. Apparently, the Portland Police Department began directing people to the group since their own auto theft division was closed in 2006. So some people were coming in with the expectation that this volunteer-run Facebook group would be doing more than just spotting abandoned cars. If you'd like even more local news and events, Sign up for our daily morning newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll link it to our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Do you have any ideas for anything we should be looking into or talking about? Send us an email at portland at citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>